<laughs> the roasts. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's do this. Episode 58, something from everyone. I'm here with Mike and Corey from Valleys. Mike, this is the second time I've introduced you on the show because last time when Baker and Jordan oh, were here, right. I accidentally said your name and I saw that again today. I was but it, it, was, it, it was supposed to be Mike. It was. It was supposed to it be. It was. He bailed. I was just reading the sheet and somehow, <laughs> yeah, reading the sheet was more important than the two faces I was looking at in front of me. Oh, but God. life happens, King. Something for everyone. I appreciate y'all making the time to come hang out here. Obviously, you guys are uh, from Values, so we got vocalists and bassist of Values here. Kings, how we living? I did backup vocals, too. He did. Okay. He so, did. Sorry, sorry to tell you short. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, no, no, uh, no. that's how it was. I, I think I'm um, alive. You can hold that if that's easier. I don't know what. Let me oh, God. Oh, is that oh, right? Yeah, dude. Whatever you want. Yeah, okay. No, Closer's better. Cool. Just don't cup it. You can't. You can't. No, well, this is <laughs> impossible. Yeah, it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. You'd figure I'd know how my way around this, but. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'm still learning. I don't, if that's really uncomfortable, put it back on the table. That's a don't fun worry fact about, right like, there. I don't know, understand microphones at all. Hell yeah, dude. I am technologically ignorant. I understand my camera as far as it like it works. Yeah. But like, I feel like I should understand how this fucking thing captures light. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me that I point this camera at some shit and then it remembers what it saw. Like, that doesn't make sense in my dumb brain. And I feel like I should be able to understand it. And I have no Sometimes idea. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. I mean, that's all, functionally, it's all I need. But like, yeah. It feels absurd to like use something all day and have absolutely no idea what's going on inside of it. It's the magic, but man. That's how it be. <laughs> Corey, grown a little hair since I saw you last time. How are you doing? Well, I mean, I brought Patrick. Patrick's here. <laughs> Everyone needs Patrick. Fucking Roadhouse. And that's, that's what I went for, but instead I got like 1980s lesbian gym teacher. <laughs> but it's... Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just there's what nothing I wrong That's with that. That's a good-ass gym teacher. I'll uh, tell you what. Yeah, You're climbing uh, the rope. <laughs> You're doing that next pull-up. Yep. Lots of push-ups. You're doing that next pull-up. <laughs> Lots of jumping jacks. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, my God. Hell yeah, dude. I need to start off with a story that Jordan and Baker told last time. Oh. You correctly guessed what story I was going to start you with here. That and one. it is the 8 by 10 down the stairs. I, as I go back to it, it is the craziest thing to imagine a human being holding eight by 10 over their head and then that eight by 10 happening down the stairs. Okay. And I would love to hear your version of what I have here. And Mike, please try to correct the record. I, Let's make sure this is solid in history. I, I can do the forward here. I can say for, for sure that that base cab is the heaviest thing on planet earth. <laughs> It was just it very wasn't heavy. That bad. It wasn't it was, that bad. Every time it was like it, two people would ca- like carry it. Yeah, and it was too much. <laughs> it, was, it was too much, and yeah, the I was in uh, Jordan's truck with Joe Tiago and Jordan, and we were like just listening to some bullshit, and we watched the base cab land flat on the ground <laughs> from some unknown, you know, unknown uh, or, an, uh, an unknown area of origin. <laughs> and it just f- like a flew down from heaven. And, and Joe was just like, what was that? <laughs> and then Jordan was like, oh, I think that was Corey. And Joe rolls up the window <laughs> really <like>, quick. <laughs> like, he's like, I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> I feel like you saw the cab and you instinctually were I, like, that's, that's part of values. None of it's a big deal anymore. All so, right. All right, Corey, set there. Right, if I, if, I, if I can, like, specify the day. <laughs> I believe it was, like, the Brothers of Brutality, like, pre-party. It was, like, 2016. Hell yeah. That's okay. eight years ago, by the way, gentlemen. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> we got a math sit, major on sit, the cast today. Not a math major. It's a time major, I guess. <laughs> He's the best. That's a story. long time ago. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was eight years ago. Let's go. I was playing this. I don't know. I was in my early 20s, so I was broke. So I had this shitty acoustic B810. Okay. And I found out later, against my will, that it was made of pretty much particle board. <laughs> this particle board might as well have against been... Against your will is so generous. Dude, well, it, it might have been fucking... It, it might as well have been fucking cardboard. Well, the bottom started to rot out a while back, and then me and my buddy Stefan, who was in my earlier band, I Bear Witness... We took a sheet of three-quarter-inch plywood. I mean, like, we found the burliest plywood we could, cut it, measured it, fitted it up with the casters so that it would sit like a normal cab. Like, we put a lot of thought into this. We got it all set up and everything, and I went to screw it in, and it, like, felt it screwed into fucking Play-Doh. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So there was about 87 screws all the way around, kind of attaching the bottom to the sides. During this show... And uh, this was back when that whole uh, 
cold cock whiskey. I'm not sure uh, if you remember that. Cold cock whiskey. Cold yeah. cock whiskey. Dude, as a photographer, I emailed them cold asking for a whiskey. Cold cock whiskey. And I remember being a little annoyed. I was like, dude, they've given it to literally everyone. Why are they not answering me? So that was back during this craze. The and best I had, times, yeah. And I had consumed an entire bottle before Classic. us playing. Okay. So already really, really well uptight. Hydrated. Really uptight. <laughs> and I remember it was like during the last two songs. I saw this thing, the cab, just start to slowly trickle down. I was like, what, what is it? What's happening? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it turns out that the screws in the sides, the sides were rotted. So <laughs> this three-quarter inch piece of plywood was just like plying itself into the cab. Yep. And there was nothing I can do. I, I, there was nothing I could do. It was just like falling down. I'm like, what? every single <laughs> reverberation of a bass note one like <laughs> centimeter down, one <laughs> centimeter down. So during the last song, I actually caught it with my foot and I'm holding it up. And I looked at Jordan and I was like, it's going, it's going. The set ends. I thank God. Does Jordan know what's happening? Like, what's Jordan's reaction in this moment? Jordan? Yeah. Jordan is the he, audience to every issue. <laughs> he's sweating profusely and he's like, what do you want me to do? Which is fair. It's what do you fair. want from me? He, he's, got, he's got other stuff going on. <laughs> His four limbs are busy with other stuff. Right. He's got other stuff going on. Yeah. So <laughs> Other stuff going on. This thing's collapsing in front of my eyes, and I catch it with my foot. Okay. The set ends. Thank God. I'm like, Baker, Baker. I run over and unplug it from the side. I'm like, get the head off the cap. Get the head off the cap. He does that. I take the cap and just throw it on the ground. And at this point, I'm just like so enraged because I spent so much time mocking up this stupid piece of plywood. <laughs> so I grabbed it. And I think the thing was like, I don't know, 130 pounds, 140 pounds. It wasn't like that much. It wasn't like a crazy staggering amount. I felt, well, I guess that's a testament to my strength. <laughs> it wasn't a staggering amount. Dude, I used to power lift. <laughs> I, 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 maybe I was being dramatic. Well, I, I was just like, No! <laughs> So everyone went outside because, you know, it was stand outside fest. Let's all go stand outside and smoke and whatever. Copyright I put the thing me. up on my shoulder and I walked it outside. <laughs> now, at this particular venue, it was in Southington, I believe. There was an upper parking lot and then there was a lower parking lot. And the lower parking lot was like way bigger. So we had that banana hammock yellow trailer of ours that we used to tow around. Yes. So we went to the lower parking lot because it was like there was way more space. So we could do like a little pull through type of situation <laughs> and take up two spots and no one really gave a shit. There was a staircase that led to that parking lot. Now, I kind of set it up. I put my hand behind it and kind of did like a modified shot put. <laughs> but I do remember there were a lot of people there. And I was just so mad. And the th- you know what came out of my mouth before I threw it? I would love to know. I said, hi, your neighbor. <laughs> and threw it. And I'm not kidding you when it did not touch any of the stairs. It soared and went splat. I mean, it, it was like a that whack. Shit, that it was shit fell out of the sky. Like flat, dude. <laughs> that thing, like, oh, no. I don't know how I managed it, but I got it on the perfect angle. In the air to land dead flat on the pavement. <laughs> it splatted and, dude, that was that. I was like, I was done with that cab. There <laughs> Some people came with me. It's like, dude, you just wrecked your cab. I'm like, I'm going to get another one. And nobody that one's bothered done. us the rest of the night. That one is done. <laughs> After you guys that, probably, it's over. <laughs> if it's anyone done. Getting paid for that show, you guys would have been paid first. That's a guarantee right like, there. Give me the envelope. Give me the envelope. <laughs> Holy fuck. There's $16 in here. <laughs> Oh, that's a good night. Oh, that's shit. huge. That's big local band money. How much oh. are we doing merch? We sold three shirts. Oh my god, that's eight dollars. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad we got the record set on <laughs> what happened to this cap. You throw one eight ten down the stairs. And that's then you all you're remembered for. <laughs> eight years ago. Eight years ago. I mean, it's a good thing to be remembered for. There's a lot worse things that have happened in Value's lives that could be identified by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I think the it's fun to leave that story to me because it's very counterintuitive to that story. Value is a very like bright spot in the local scene to me. Like it's a very like fond time in my memory and like the I was today getting ready for the thing. I was like going back and watching a lot of live sets, a lot of footage, like scrolling through the Facebook and just like reliving where those were. Watching uh, yeah. get a music video from the uh, Teen Center, the ATC. 
Oh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I, remember that. <laughs> like, I went to high school at that place. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> unbelievable did. memory lane. And it's like, I felt like all the videos were filled with like with the crowds that Wait, were all the my ATC? friends. Yeah. ATC. Oh, oh, oh! I didn't go to high school there. I saw it. I yeah. thought he was talking, dude. That's why I was like, I, I was, was like, thought he was talking <laughs> about the Teen Center in West Springfield, where was that us that played, or was that like my other band? <laughs> you know what? That was definitely my other band. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just threw a fucking bone in that. Unbelievable. <laughs> There we go. I just threw a bone in that. No, nope. my other band paid this fucking place. It was a teen center from where our high school used to be. They demolished it and they built a new high school. I think that teen center is actually still there in my hometown of West Springfield, Massachusetts. <laughs> Huge. Like he used, to, he used to just go there like it was like middle school dances. I mean, yeah. Well, if you, if you try to refer to shows like specifically by location, I'm like. Oh, it was a place somewhere. Don't don't so know unless we played it like five times. In the, the, you know? the point of my tangent here is like everyone I saw in the crowd was a homie, and it was talking to me like how many people are I'm still friends with from this time, and they were all there, all part of this thing. And yeah, it always strikes me that I was such a bright memory, and the stories we tell are about cabs going downstairs or <laughs> trailers that didn't work or shows in fucking carpet <clears> stores. But like, there is like a brightness here. I want to go back to like the start of this journey a little bit, like 2012 when this thing's coming together. Like, as you are forming values, like, what is the what is the goal as kids? Just to play more shows? Just to, like, make something happen? Oh, yes, me. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, so the, the initial creation of values was just myself, Jordan, and uh, Steve Wilcox. Yep. Who, uh, and we were just in Steve's room, just ripping off the plot in you. And <laughs> it was literally one of the first songs we ever did is, I guess, a backwards version of... Uh, uh, what's that song that they're known for where it's like the the girls like I'm pregnant <laughs> whatever <laughs> that one oh uh, it's off that record firstborn yeah firstborn which <laughs> okay. is pretty dope miscarriage so, yes that that's the song that's the song yeah yeah so uh, one of the one of the one part. of the parts in that song is like a reversal of that and it was like that's fine you know that's how you do it you steal shit and then pretend it's yours yeah so <laughs> we um fake it till you make it <laughs> and I initially at that time was kind of over trying to be in bands because I'd been in so many bands yeah. that really weren't, like, taking off, that weren't doing anything. It was just kind of like, I just like doing it. I just, you know, um, the music in general had enriched my soul and uh, exercised a lot of my angst over, over like, you know, my freaking psychotic life. So sure. um, I had, had already had enough experiences. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to, you know, do this anymore, but I'll... I'll help out and I'll do vocals until you find somebody full time. So that's how that was working out. And then eventually it was like, all right, now we're going to play a show. And the first show, I think you still find on YouTube, worst <laughs> fucking show you'll ever watch in your life. It Whoa. was uh, just because primarily, you know, we find out Jordan's top string because Jordan played guitar in this. I was going to say, in, I didn't know he strings on his dark kid. time. Dark <laughs> take it from, take it from Jordan playing guitar. Jordan. Um, when Jordan, when you listen to this, <laughs> send just, him a message. Just a just a quick. Uh, he's he's actually he's not a bad guitar player. No, he's capable. He, he can't he can't keep up with the likes of Baker because Baker's just something else. But yeah. Baker's Baker, and that's hard to keep up. Yeah, with. yeah. But he has his own style, and his style <laughs> is just not what we turned into. Okay. Yeah. Going, Thank goodness he found the kid. Then. Well, that's, yeah. That's the thing is. Um, the, I'll touch on how he found the kid. The genre, the genre we mostly did was like you know it was kind of a post hardcore. Um, it was you know really like straightforward stuff. It was yeah. like you know verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, breakdown, uh, all that good stuff. Um, and then eventually, you know, like when we played that live show, we find out that his his top string wasn't tuned at all. So every, everything was out of tune in the entire show. Um, Bass player was Mike Stoffer, awesome guy, and he was playing bass, and he had so much passion. He had more passion than we deserved for that band, in all seriousness. He was quite excellent. And um, and then we had uh, Cameron Lisk uh, on drums, who is a nasty drummer. Like, he's, oh, yeah, he, he's he was awesome. – he was – you know, I believe he still is uh, a pretty awesome drummer. I, you know, I don't want to say like he was. I, I, I'm, I, I'm very sure that talent is still in there. And he, like, he was the one who kind of was like holding it together. Um, and he was the most nervous because he really wanted it to be good. And Jordan couldn't care less. And I, uh, I just was like, 
I don't know. I got, we'll, we'll sure. see where yeah. this goes and whatever. And yeah. then, um, it's going to be what it's going to be. Right. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, uh, an interesting time, but like then, you know, kind of watching the video re- replay and I was like, Oh, <laughs> this is, this is pretty bad. And in the background of that video is a young Baker just watching and, Good Lord, he didn't realize he was staring at his worst nightmare. <laughs> he was he was like, his future. he had no idea he was going to be in this band. Uh, and then, like, after that, <laughs> right, yeah. So <laughs> after that happened, uh, we kind of just broke up because eventually we're trying to, like, keep it going. We're like, let's keep it going. Um, and then we kind of just fell into a rut. And it was just time to, like, I was like, all right, like, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, you know, the what made us special is just not there right now, you know, and nobody's that committed to trying to do something cool, whatever. And, you know, and it was like it was what it was. That's that happens. That's that's naturally what happens in bands. Um, and so then we were like stopped. And then uh, we eventually were going to come back together because Baker decided I'm going to join with Isaac Mine and I'm going to join Values. Mm-hmm. So and I didn't, you know, whoever, whoever. I, uh, whoever may or may not know about with eyes like mine, I don't know. Uh, I forgot how far into the lore that uh, sure, Jordan went yeah, into, yeah. but with eyes like mine was a pretty excellent post hardcore band. They wrote really solid, tight stuff, and then uh, the personalities just started to clash after a while. And uh, then Jordan started to kind of start, you know, like was focusing on values and. You know, I, and I was my whole thing was after a while because at this point now I'm like, well, this is this is my band. I'm I'm in this band mm-hmm. and I'm here. And so after that, it was like, okay, I need to uh, convince Jordan, you know, and whoever else that this project has potential. I can't just say like, it's time to get serious. It's time yeah. to get like we got to get to like you got to lead by example. It's it's, it's yeah. like yeah, it's like I have to like okay, I'm gonna take it seriously. Yeah, and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to, cause I can, like I was doing videos and stuff at the time and I was making the art and whatever. And it's like, I have to kind of sell this to my own band members. I have to sell this band to these band members mm-hmm. and let, tell them like, there's really something good here. <laughs> I see it. We just have to carve it out. And so just over time, we just kept, going and we were kind of going like with different members we had members going in and out we had paul frasco who now runs a very successful uh car detailing business as on our drums um and we had mike stoffer he continued to be on uh on bass for a little while and he was like kind of like going to guitar um aj was around in and out with us um he was supposed to be the main drummer uh at one point for the band, AJ Parisi. Um, excellent drummer, still an excellent drummer. And Dude, that probably... guy was one of the best drummers I've ever seen. Yeah. Ever seen. He actually tried out for Glass Cloud. Yes. Well, he fucking could have done it. And oh, he and he's a and nasty. he's and he's nasty. a top tier engineer as far as music production Super goes. Super smart. Like Super smart. Ridiculous. Um awesome and, dude too. And he's been doing it for he's been doing it for a long time. Like he's been doing it since he was a youngin, so Sorry, AJ, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I didn't mean to say young. I don't know. That. But I do know that he's been doing it, you know, since yeah, he was, yeah. you know, uh, you know, basically a kid. And uh, he's been killing it, and he's still killing it. And, um, you know, so it was like, you know, we, we were just a, c- a conglomerate of, like, mem- rotating members. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just like, who can we get for this show? Okay. <laughs> you and just said rotating it, members. Rotating members. <laughs> <laughs> rotating members. <laughs> rotating members. <laughs> <laughs> How did you rotate Jordan We're as the member of the <laughs> We're all just 14. Oh, that's, yeah, that's... We're what, all just 14. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, at, at, at this point, um, I remember, who was it, that that college rec room we played? Yeah. Um, which was, we played that with uh, Fuming Mouth. <laughs> It's an absurd thing for college picture to take that, on. Yeah, picture that. Uh, Fuming mouth in their early Baker days. Baker and Jordan talked about it. I think so, like yeah, a, yeah. A student, yeah. Student union? Student union. Yeah. Student union. That's, yeah. that's, what, they told that's, me. What, that's yeah. what it's called, yeah. and, uh, apparently. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and Corey played that show with us, yeah, and I was I, like... I was um, my second or third show with What him. a debut. <laughs> it was my second or third show. The first okay. show was at the Webster. It was Halloween. It was 2014. Uh, that's probably a great show to play. It was uh, opening for, like, Born of Osiris or something like that. 
The band that definitely did not fit exactly <laughs> oh, what we oh, were oh, doing. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, with Attila, I think. Was it? I don't think it was with Attila. Oh. I, I, think, I, I think I would have remembered that <laughs> because I would have been like, hey, oh, yeah. I got to go no, outside I think that was for like 30 minutes. I do remember we did play. So we we, <laughs> we opened. It was like it was kind of a funny like circumstance of, you know, just luck where we played a show. We we're opening for Attila, but we we're mainly opening the underground. Yep. So we we're opening yeah. the show of the show. <laughs> so yeah. we were the very first band. What what people didn't realize was that like the whole underground was going to be closed, like the whole main thing was going to be closed off. So there's people just like anchovied into this mm. freaking like little thin tunnel of the Webster <laughs> underground. That was the best and, coincidence and, for and, bands. Yeah. And we're just, we have a packed crowd and we are not ready, but we do <laughs> it. And, and I just see like, just, I remember like everybody was kind of like moving around trying to like, you know, do stuff. And then we get to a breakdown and the drowners swell and this. 40 year old ball dude just starts wailing <laughs> on the little kids and I was just like, oh God, <laughs> that's all right. Well, that's fun. That was that was entertaining. And then like <laughs> right as we ended, the doors opened up and I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's an experience. Bye. Bye. What, what luck? See you later. <laughs> we, we just stole that whole thing. <laughs> Thanks for coming to hang out with values. Nobody had that, a and nobody remembered it. It was like, okay, but yeah. So that was one thing. But yeah. The, the, the Born of Osiris show is the one that I first played with you guys, mm -hmm. and I was a fill-in. Mm -hmm. I was only a fill-in. Baker had come up to me and was like, hey, you know, I like what you do on stage with those guys, and I bear witness, and why don't you, uh, could you fill in for us? And I was like, yeah, I'm 21. I got nothing going on. <laughs> Which I didn't. <laughs> I had nothing going on. So I learned the set, went to a few practices, whatever. We played that student union show. Mm -hmm. Yep. Incredibly interesting uh, yeah. because uh, Jordan was still on guitar. Paul <laughs> was on drums. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, Paul missed a couple practices. And then it just wasn't like, it just didn't feel good. It was just, yeah. it did not feel good as a set. Like, uh, it, it didn't. This was kind of like the idea of, um, uh, diverging interests, so to say, you know, a lot of, a lot of the times, like the, you know, the mem the members we were getting, you know, they were transitioning to other passions, yep. and it was kind of like, you know, Paul was done. Yeah, but yeah, Paul was, you know, he was he he had he had his detailing thing. He was really starting up. He was like, really starting to catch fire, and now he details like anything, everything. It speaks a lot. I always thought it sp spoke a lot to their integrity in a sense because, you know, they were still doing it. They were still helping us, even yeah. though they didn't have to. It yeah. was like it's just a band. It's not you know right. just, nobody nobody remembers it after we're done. Like you know they just they they actually watch who they came. Little to, did to you watch. know, ten years later, you're sitting here talking about it still. Well, you know well, th that's the thing is like the the you know my mindset at the time was very much like this is important to me and that's the most important part. Sure, he, you he, know he didn't have to say that. No, no, you well, didn't have to say ten years later. I, I say that as a testament you, of how long thanks, this thing man. has stood, how long you've built this thing. That, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's lasted such a time. When you believe in something, you will go the distance. You know, yeah. so um, yeah, it definitely. Yeah, the the age. Yeah, don't feel old. Feel accomplished. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing. Is like the age thing is like you know that's something we're dealing with now. <laughs> I've never actually heard that before. Don't feel old. Feel accomplished. Yeah, that's I'll start it. saying that shit from now on. You're Thank welcome, you, Peter. I got you. Brighten your shit. That'll brighten your morning. Start your mornings off like that. <laughs> yeah, write it on your mirror. Yeah. <laughs> don't feel old. Feel accomplished. I don't. <laughs> write it on the inside of your boxers. And just <laughs> take a peek at it every once in a while. Feel, <laughs> don't feel old. Feel accomplished. Say that to my fucking back. Oh god. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know, so that, that, but that was the thing. It was like, you know, we just we were we were just chaos. We were just like, well, we're going with it, you know. And it didn't matter to me at the time. I was like, it doesn't really matter if it's good, yeah, you know, live. It's just it matters that we just get out there and do it. And that was it. And you know, eventually, he uh, proposed to Jordan. <laughs> oh man! So this and is shortly after it's that. It's a beautiful show. story. And for one, I was forced into the band. Okay. I never even got the chance to say no. Baker was just like, all right, man, we got this show, this show, this show coming up. And I was like, cool. <laughs> You're filling in for all of them. I was like, cool, who you got? Who you got uh, filling in? And he was like, no, you're in the band. And I was like, no, I'm not. He's like, no, 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 dude, dude. He's like, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> you're the, the only band. honest person. <laughs> and I was like, 
No, I'm fucking not. I got other stuff going on. I didn't have other stuff. Going on. <laughs> just didn't want to. I do had it. nothing else just, going just on. Just like this is a fever. I was like, I'm not gonna. I am not gonna let this. You're, you're I am not threshold. gonna let this dude tell me what to fucking do. <laughs> I'll join this band on my accord. Did I want to join the band? Sure. Was I gonna let him know that right then and there? No. No. <laughs> no. I do what I want when I want. Okay. So I developed a compromise. I said, fine. The great oh, treaty yeah. of 2015. I'm in the band. And I turned, I looked at Jordan. And I was like, I'm in the band if you play drums. And Jordan's like, well, I mean, I play guitar for this. This is like a side project. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> We've had like way more practices where you've had to play drums. Yeah. And they've gone smoother. So why don't you just play drums? Because like, that's what you do. Every time you play guitar, you play guitar out of this, like, it was like a blown Mesa dual wreck. <laughs> that definitely, How many stairs do you think you could go down? I don't know. Dude, this, this Mesa dual wreck needed new tubes back in, like, 96. And he's still just, like, playing It broke it. coming out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> <It didn't laughs> and I was like, dude, just, just, fuck's sakes, play drums. Play drums. It's what you're good at. Yeah. And I hate to give that guy any credit. But he, <laughs> is, he is... An incredible drummer. He's yes. very good. That guy hits harder than anyone I've ever seen. I mean, mm -hmm. when he plays drums, he plays mm -hmm. drums. He hits those things like they owe him money. Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, it, he's Italian. Is it, yeah, <laughs> he, he, uh, he definitely... <laughs> oh, there we go. There <laughs> already, it is. Already cracked that There seal. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that, that was the thing was, you know, Jordan was the best possible drummer for simply for the fact that he knew how to hit the drums hard. Yeah. And every hit was like intentional. It was like a like just it locked everything in place. He, he knew just, how to do that. He just understood the material. Yeah. So well. The and he knew energy as much as they were like a sound. It was just like, he, yeah, there's a well, feeling. He just there. knew what was yeah. needed. Yeah. He knew like the intensity playing hard, playing fast, and he could do it. Yep. And he could do it easily. So I was like, dude, just... And you mentioned that Baker was also in the it. band, also playing guitar at the time, so there's also yeah. a very stark contrast there. Of yes. Like yeah. Someone who's born to play guitar and someone who wants to play guitar. Yeah. It was yeah. honestly annoying at some points, <laughs> being up in front of these idiots. I'm going to have to have Jordan back in here to defend himself. I feel Thoroughly. bad talking about how bad he is at guitar. At but. some point, we will do a full... He's, like, not a bad, he's not a bad guitarist. I'm not saying he's a bad guitarist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just his style... In of the... playing guitar was not the style that we were kind of leaning into. Yeah. It, it's he, not he's, a, he's a good guitar. Yeah. He's a really, really well-versed musician. He is. As much as I hate to give him credit, and believe me, I fucking hate to give him credit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's a well-versed musician. And he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows what kind of sound he's after. The sound he's after wasn't necessarily the sound that we were all just kind of gravitating towards yeah mm -hmm. no one really had a sound in mind we didn't really have a plan in mind we just kind of did yeah it unfolded we did fast we did heavy we did loud we definitely did loud, <laughs> loud. like i have like 30 percent loss of hearing in my left ear where'd baker set up <laughs> always on my goddamn left yeah yeah that's how it was that's, that's scientific how... proof right there that's how it was. But, you know, it was like... Uh, Where was, this there was times that dude set up so loud that I was like, I couldn't actually hear him. <laughs> like, that phrase, too loud to hear, Yeah, I didn't actually believe was real. <laughs> until, like, that night. I think it was at the Shamrock in Westfield. Yep. Remember one. how fucking loud he was? Yeah, <laughs> that small room, that small area. And I was like, dude, <laughs> you can, like, turn down a little bit. And he was like, why? And I was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like, Jesus Christ. Once Baker has his Please. mindset on yeah. something, it's like, it's like, hey, Baker, can you fix that? He goes, why? No. Yeah. Like, and you know he walked away and turned it up, right? <laughs> and he'll just be like, I'm not turning this Yeah, down. yeah. You think Slayer ever turned down? <laughs> I'm like, we're not playing to a stadium. This is a small bar in Westfield. Where does this thing peak? So we've got our core group of guys assembled now. Well, what are some of the peaks of values? Like, as you look back, as you reflect on it now, like, yeah, where are some of the, the highlights of this journey? I have a Warped Toy written down. I have some, yeah, headlining shows of the Websters. I have fans with tattoos. Um, like, lots of cool stuff happened. What stands out in your brain as peaks? One big one, because, like, like before all this, I know one big peak show was the Oceano show. It was, like, our first show kind of back. Yeah. I forgot about Warped yeah. Tour. Uh, Warped Tour? I forgot about that. 
Oh well, yeah, that was. Uh, we'll get there. You played Warp Tour. <laughs> yeah, Warp. yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, that yeah, that's a that's a that's a can of worms in itself. Sure. Um, oh yeah. You know, we did that, and we, God, we just we kind of kept going from there, and uh, eventually. You know that Oceano show? I was in the crowd. Oh, that's right. I wasn't in the band yet. I was in the crowd, and you like slammed into and me, I and I was like. Him. Who and is was, this little peckerhead? He was very mad. <laughs> who is this little peckerhead, and who does he think he is? And I and I didn't know him, so I was just like, I was like, I, like he comes up to me, he's talking to me, and I'm just like, this guy's kind of a dork. And I remember thinking that. And then and then like later on, I got to know him, and I was like, oh, this guy is is scary. <laughs> like he's very scary. Scary like, dork. I didn't know. I didn't see the crazy eyes at first, but now I'm seeing them. I mean, this dude ran full fledged off the stage. Like different full times. speed right into me and like turned around and like threw his back into me and I was like, get the, <laughs> get the hell off! Me. What the hell? Which was kind of the expectation whenever I did that. It's like anytime I do that, it's like there are some people who get really mad and I'm yeah. just like, you could push me back. It's okay. <laughs> what was you know, that? I, that had know. to be 2013 because I was there to see uh, my friends and heal the destroyer. Yep, heal like, the destroyer was there too. Yep, Dylan, Justin. Um, Love that band. Oh, my God, dude. I can't even remember all their names. Dylan, Justin, <laughs> Eric Richard. Eric, yep. Uh, Aaron, oh, yeah. I, I believe Aaron Galepsi. Aaron, yes. Aaron, and, uh, Aaron, yep. I, I forget the... Uh, the bass player. <laughs> no I think worries. his name was Mike. No, it wasn't Mike. It wasn't Mike. The problem with citing names on God here damn. is you're setting yourself up for failure. I know, and That's I feel fine, I dude, I call feel me out. Like, cor- I feel so bad because it's like I want to know the, the name is the name is on the tip. Oh, of my I think his name was John. John, yes, John. I think it was John. Yes, John. I'm so sorry, John. <laughs> sorry, John. I, I, I love you so much. You're I just a handsome my... man. You always had a very fantastic. Yeah, John beard. rules, but peaks of value is here. So Oceano <laughs> show is one of these. Stay people. on target. What, what else you got? What else went well? We're gonna go off target like eight uh, million times. Bro, well, that's why I'm just, here. Just get ready. I'm here. I'm your, the, I'm your site. That, well, that's the, that's the main thing. Is like a lot of a lot of the. the I remember one peak show was. Uh, I, I can't remember what show what exactly it was or what, when we were playing, who we were playing with. But I remember it was kind of like just not really a packed show, and it was just us as a four piece. I remember you were having trouble because you guys cleared out the bar at the uh, in uh, at the Webster that night. Um, oh, you're talking about the Within the Ruin show. The Within the Ruin show. When me and Baker put down a keg of harpoon, mm-hmm. and then we also decided that it would be who of us to clear out the Jameson. Yeah, and do him a favor. Yeah. <laughs> That was so, kind. That was so, very kind. It, was kind. So, it wasn't kind. That that wasn't even really <laughs> the really that wasn't even really the highlight. 22. Although it has come up become a highlight in the midst of things. It was kind of like a bonus. Like yeah, this is the night there. You know, and everybody was so like you know, like I think I was okay, but like I know they were like so messed up that like you know Corey's trying to turn on his <laughs> cat and he's just like fucking things not working <laughs> and then just turn it. Have you tried turning it on? He just he goes. <laughs> there we go. There's yeah. them lights. And, yeah, it was. It was. Um, and that that one I remember specifically because we were playing <laughs> we were playing like earlier material, like older stuff that we usually played. And in the midst of it, we had written a song called "Modern Love." We hadn't played it yet. We hadn't played it for live at all. And this was the first time. And I remember saying, "Like, who wants to hear some new stuff?" And and it was like okay, because like you know, nobody, nobody was that excited. Yeah. They were just like a lot of them were there for just who like because the because <laughs> we're here as friends. We're here to help. And then you know we just like you know Jordan just goes you know Dana and then I remember the view of like I just like just ran up onto like the the speaker like the the main PA speaker on the stage and just. Just started belting that intro, and we did that song, and it was fast. How does it go again? <laughs> <laughs> Corey hates it when I beatbox, so that was a risk. <laughs> um, so, so with that I remember that came out, and like the just the chaos of it all was just so like abrupt for everybody. And I remember after we got off the stage, like you know, some people were just like, "What was that?" <laughs> and we were like, "Oh, it's just some new stuff." And they were like, "Wow!" Like. And that kind of like settled in my mind, but it didn't like yeah. it didn't like you know blossom. It was just kind of like a thing of like okay, people like that. Yeah. And then another big like show that really kind of like set us really on the course was um, at the it was the the cave uh, in West Haven. West Haven was it? Is it at West Haven? 
Well, he said it, yeah. That's what the cave is. To, yeah, I'm going to assume it is West <laughs> Like I said, some of the facts. <laughs> you played a show somewhere. Yeah. It's like, it's all feelings to me. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> remember this. But feelings. yes. But um, I remember this was like, you know, it was just the four of us. And before that show, even we even got to that show, bad snowstorm, just suddenly just bam. Which were like young. We didn't really care about watching the weather. So it's like we had been paying attention. Maybe we would have seen but the snow, you know, it was crazy. I'm still surprised every time it snows. Yeah, it's I like, am, well, sometimes am, you just live in life, and then you're like, what the hell? I am now, um, I am now remembering the show. Yeah. I am now remembering it, the, I was, the I, events. I would always ride with, I was always riding to the show with Jordan because I always had bad cars at that time. So I was like, I'm going to go to Jordan's house. And I, on my way there, my car started sliding, and it flew up into a bunch of bushes on the side of the road. And was like, my car was like, like this, and I'm looking at the road down. I'm just like, oh, my God. But I hadn't turned over, flipped over Jesus. at all yet. So I was like, this could be bad. So I had to, like. Yeah, you're still all good. Yeah, I, I managed to get it out. And I remember somebody, like, uh, like somebody in their car was just, like, rolled down their window, like, are you okay? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm good. I got out of that. I'm going to take this real slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I my nerves were like, oh yeah. god. So as they should be. Yeah, that was intense. And then finally got to Jordan's, and I was like, I was like, just so I was like, let's just go, let's just do this. Get in this truck. Get it over with. We stop at the gas station. Corey and Baker call us because they already got there, and this they is the part that I'm remembering. They, and they go and they go. Yeah, there's no bar, <laughs> and we're just like, what? And then I believe it was Baker. He Baker. just goes, there's no <laughs> bar. <laughs> At that point, we were young, dumb, and we were just like, let's drink everything in sight. And, you know, that was the case of like, <laughs> just like, okay, so that sucks. What is this thing? You know, we drive up in this snowstorm yep. and, you know, realizing that there are like, I don't know, like 12 or 13 bands on this thing. It was the times when people would put a, like a festival size show together it, that did not need to exist. Like, Starting at 6.30. Yeah. It's like, so, dude, what? It's, it's, like, at like seven. it's like, what, guys? It's only 3 a.m. We're, you know, we're still going here. You know? like, <laughs> and it's like, okay. Uh, but, you know, we were kind of in the middle. Yeah. And we were kind of aggravated because we were just like, you know, weren't really getting along with everybody. Everybody was like a little... There were some of them that were, like, younger than us and definitely, like, you know, it was, like, it, it, you know, when you go to shows and you're, like, in a band and it's, like, sometimes if you don't know people, if like, you know, like, the egos are everywhere, you know, including, you know, ourselves. Like, we're just, like, you know, it's just what you do. It's, like, you know, it's how you interact and then eventually everybody chills out at some point. Yeah. And then it's, like, oh, okay. It's the same posturing that happens in every other social yeah. environment. It's yeah. just, it's, like, literally, and um, yeah, little do I know. <laughs> so... But yeah, so like, uh, you know, we're just waiting to go up, and then eventually, um, it was uh, Baker got mad at Jordan because Jordan <laughs> officially said, "Yeah, this is the theme here." <laughs> Jordan official Jordan had said it on like, he said, "I want to be the drummer of Values." Actually, he didn't say it yet, but that's gonna be a thing. Um, so we're just waiting to play, and we're just listening to all these bands, and they're all just like these kids who are just playing the stuff like covers of their favorite bands. You know, they're just. You know, and I remember being like that. It was like, you know, you're still learning. You're still doing stuff, and you think you're the shit. And it's like, cool, fun, but hard to sit through when you <laughs> just been like, okay. It's more or less pissing off the sound guy. Yeah, yep. the sound Yeah, the sound people are just like. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Hang on. I got to piss super bad. Please. Yeah. Yes. Pee-pee time. Pee-pee Enjoy. Break. It's time. Have fun. You know where everything is. Say hi to Jack. I will. I will. Should we continue or should Please. I take a break? We can we can keep going if you want. Yeah, if you want to pause, we can pause while we. <laughs> <laughs> this will be fun. This will be a f okay. I'll keep going because okay. that'll, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, while we have two seconds here, uh, I want to touch on lyrics quickly, and this feels like a rude question to ask while Corey's here because it very like clearly draws him out. So while we have two seconds while he's gone, uh, lyrics here are always like very personal, very intimate, and I think that there's a the voice of values comes through through the lyrics, right? I think mm -hmm. it's what lyrics are for, but uh, what are you? Yeah, what are you writing for? Where are these things coming from? Like, I, they're all very personal, they're all intimate. So I'm not asking you to share. Yeah, what happened in your life that stems this? But like, as you're writing, are you conscious that you're doing it for the good of other people? Like, yeah, are these just you trying to cope with? I'm feeling this, so I'm going to get it out. Is it that people need to hear this? Is it just poems that really don't have an emotional tie? Like, where are these lyrics coming from? 
<sighs> yeah, it uh, it really depends on which song, you know. Okay. Like that's usually the case. Like the Violence EP, I didn't really have. Like there were some personal things of yeah. which I a lot of the things I've changed my mind on. I think a fun a fun little fun a fun fact I guess I'll open up about is Enablers, which a lot of people like. And I wrote it about uh, drug addicts, and I was very negative towards that stuff. I was like very, and it came from like you know just you know my uh, resentment of my father, and it was just kind of like you know I was just pissed, yeah. and yeah, and I kind of like put that out there. I was just like screw drug addicts, screw this stuff, you know. And it was like it was a very different side because it was like I was a very sheltered mind, and I just like wrote that out. And that song is still sick. It's like it's still a great riff, you know, mm-hmm. good riffs. Um, but then, you know, over time, I kind of like, you know, as we were going into uh, losses, I was like, I was like, that was the wrong view, because, yeah, you know, like a, a drug addict is not somebody who needs to be demonized. Like they they need yeah. love more than anything, and that's the most challenging thing. It's yeah, and I won't get into that. Do you like, <laughs> you know, um, but. Uh, you know, so it was a big, that was a big deal of like, you know, like I need to change this up. So it's been kind of like an evolution of like, what am I, I'm writing and I'm kind of laying out this blueprint of, you know, how distance am I from myself and my emotions yeah. and, um, and am I, you know, like losses was the first really like the first time where I said, I need to talk about some real personal shit. I need to really say something dark about myself and like get it out and, you know, there are songs that I wrote about, you know, my father, uh, which I'd never done before. And there were songs that I was just writing about, you know, political stuff, which, you know, it was they were not really like, you know, well in depth and everything, but it was still something that I was thinking about. And I was thinking Working about, about yeah. life experiences and my own experience of like figuring out how to be a human, you know, just like really, really intense stuff, you know. And uh, success. Excellent. Yeah, I got most of it in the toilet. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Some of the litter box on the toilet. A little 50 50 blend here. Cats but, go. Yeah, that's the summation. It's just, you know, it's like I like to look back on it and just say, like, okay, you know, like I no longer identify with these thoughts and feelings, yeah. you know, and I think that's a good thing because a lot of it was just like it's at the time, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting problem to write things and then, yeah, get held to them because you set them in stone sort of and it's like oh yeah. fuck i didn't mean to but yeah well, that, change, well, people yeah. evolve and like yeah well, we're all well, young and learning well that's the thing too is like you know it's like i don't even really mind because it's just like it's like you know that's pretty terrible but it's like yeah it is and yeah. you know that's what you, you guys are person you gotta go yeah. i gotta do better and of course like, your lyrics or feelings are not uh not your hard stance on how the world should be like it's an emotional reaction right it's not a no it's, it's not a, a projection on what you it's think should a, happen. it's a fragment of yeah. a person you know yeah. there's fragments of people and you know that's the kind of thing you gotta understand when you see that stuff you know and you know it's there's a lot more to it but yeah. you know that's that's the a lot of times i'm just like writing free form like sometimes you know i'm just like uh i was writing a poem that started with my thoughts on uh, garfield and how he hates Mondays. <laughs> and and I'm thinking, why does Garfield hate Mondays? Garfield shouldn't hate Mondays because he's a cat. He doesn't work a nine to five. Like this doesn't yeah. make sense. But maybe, maybe he hates nine to fives and work and Mondays because John, he really loves John. So maybe John has to go to work and he's like, I'm alone. I'm alone for these hours. I hate this. And you know, then it kind of got me thinking about how I'm going to work nine to five and I'm going on this highway. And I remember I got in a huge like a bad car accident completely told my car and I'm going back and forth to work and it's like I could just die going back and forth to work this is an insane concept what am I doing why am I doing this and then I started thinking about the system that we are living in the structure of like capitalism and having to keep up with the pace of things the rat race and realizing that like it's just like you know you could just die and be plucked out of the sky like you know by a freaking cat you know it's just like that's we're just rats being eaten by you know like that's kind of where I, and it kind of goes in line with like how the internet changed Garfield into this cosmic entity that defies time and space. <laughs> so it's like, oh, yep. this is cool, and how our lives are dictated by the internet. So that's a little look into the process, you know, for yeah. as far as like writing. That's the me spot. Now. Where we go <laughs> you know, so that's where that goes. Um, but we can talk about shows again. If you want. <laughs> put a cap on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who exactly is your internet provider? And- <laughs> How do I sign up? 
I mean, it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, a highlight from the, from the Values years. What stands out to you as a, a favorite show you played, a favorite memory, a favorite cab you got to throw? What is, a, what is something you're proud of as you look back on it? Cab I got to throw. I threw one. <laughs> <laughs> I threw one of them. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's worth I've asking. You never I've know. I've hauled plenty up the stairs. But <laughs> I mean, some of our, at least my favorite shows were in Plattsburgh, New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. Plattsburgh, New York is a place that's about... 30 miles, maybe 20 miles, give or take, from the Canadian border. Super, super high up in New York, super upstate. And everyone there is all, like, super friendly. They go to shows. They show up. There was this one show that we played that you actually could not be a part of. That's right. I we had to do this fun thing that we dubbed Values 182. <laughs> Values 182. <laughs> that could be. Oh, man, please enlighten me about how it unfolded. <laughs> well, that's when I did all the vocals. delightful. Okay. The one and played bass. So we just three pieced it. Yeah. We did yeah, it a yeah. few times. I have like, never I been four, aware of this I think happening. Four that's times. Wild we did that it. that's a thing. It's yeah. the one phenomenon I can't experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just like, it's like, all right, everybody normal, but you, Corey, you're doing like Mike's job and your job all in one. How did that go? Great. It's fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Best thing in the world. (laughs) I don't remember that happening at all. Oh, it happened. It happened like four times. Values unfold through all these great journeys. We get to our wrap, our final show. What stands out about the final show now in hindsight? As we as we reflect on that, to like that show that night, like was it a was it a happy ending? Was it a fair ending? Like I think (laughs) when I was chatting with the other guys, it was kind of obvious in hindsight of like it was twenty twenty, like. The, the thing would have ended anyway, and you just didn't. In a sense, you got out at the perfect time. Like, you you jumped off the ship before everyone else had to go down with it, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> to clarify, we didn't know anything of course. <laughs> to, anybody, to anybody out there. <laughs> had no idea. Uh, I, yes, no one could have known. Uh, but, it's, yeah, in hindsight, it probably worked out pretty well, where I think a lot of bands in those years off, those forced years off, would have had to go... What's up now? And yeah, for you guys to do it on your own terms, I think was powerful. But yeah, in your in your minds, what stands out about that final show? Didn't like Baker and Jordan start loudly arguing? Yes, <laughs> they, they, yes, they did. Yeah, they, did. Yeah. Um, they say they did, and yeah. uh, you turned around. And you're like, "What's going on?" And I was just standing over there, and I was just getting fed free drinks. <laughs> so I was in my own world. Corey was for once in the best place. I was out in of my own world. Of I didn't care. What was he was having was the best time I, out I of everyone. I did not care. He's and like, I just kind of looked <laughs> candidly at Mike, and I was like, "We're fighting." <laughs> that's oh, what yeah, we're doing. That's right. I looked back. I was like, "What's going on?" I'm like, we're fighting. We're I'm like, fighting. I'm like, well, I guess it wouldn't be a value show at this point if there wasn't a loud argument. <laughs> um, yeah, I know that, what song they were fighting over too. I don't. You know, I don't even remember uh, much. You know damn well what song they were fighting. Uh, no, I don't actually. That's the thing is like, I don't, I don't really? viscerally remember much from that show. They were fighting over Dead Shelter. Dead Shelter. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cause Dead Shelter was the one that was written out of spite and it has like a very difficult technical part. So, you know, every time it's just like, I don't want to play it cause it's very <laughs> difficult. And then it's like, no, we got to play it cause it's our last show. And then like just the fighting. And then yep. it was just like. Hey guys, that's on the set list, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't remember much from it, but I remember just like it, it was a time when we were changing. I remember, um, cause as far as like, you know, speaking of even like the Warp Tour show, I remember when we played Warp Tour, it was kind of a disaster. <laughs> How um, so? It rained. It, well, it rained, which is like, it like sideways rained. Which is like I fine. I feel this. like that's almost like a tradition that we just didn't remember about yeah. Warp Tour. Like yeah. it's like it's it's it wasn't Warp Tour unless it was like raining like crazy at some point. And mm. so you know we it was raining. We weren't ready for it. Um, I, I weren't ready in terms of hadn't been practicing. weren't ready in terms of hadn't played shows that big. Like well, I, I was a little intoxicated. Okay, and you know everybody was kind of. Uh, you know, I, which I I just should not have been because I knew I had to like I, I didn't realize I was gonna be the anchor for everything, and then that stressed me out beyond belief. Sure. And I just was like, you know, thank God for um, John and Sam Dion who like took care of uh, our merch stuff. Who were like just like there, mm-hmm. like 
keeping us together mostly. And they were stressed because they were like, I didn't realize it was this difficult. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. but, dude, I went to the trailer. I went to the trailer to, you know, drink like 14 beers that we had in the in the cooler. <laughs> nice warm beers. I start, oh, oh they're piss warm. It sucked. Oh, that, that, we yeah. come, I come back from the trailer. I'm like three quarters of the way back to where our little tent was. And it just starts sideways raining. Yep. I get back and I see all these guys like fumbling to pick the heads up off the Cause ground because they're just straight up on the ground everything getting was mud sink. on them. <laughs> and like I'm dragging a tarp or something over this and I'm like, all right, well, I, I remember, uh, do it. I remember Corey was just like, we're sinking. <laughs> and I looked and I was like, we're sinking. And it's like we panic of trying to get everything off the, out of the sinking. mud. That's crazy. And I remember like I was excited like, for the preparation because you know we got the the party balloons and like inflated those and put those up and it was like this is exciting. <laughs> it was like this is like a weird like dream come true. Like for for anybody who you know wasn't you know around uh, for the warp tour excitement, you know, being in a band and being like, you know, even if you played just that one local date uh, for a warp tour, freaking exciting, you know, it was like mm. hell yes. Yeah. So, you know a lot of work goes into it. Yeah, well, it was a lot like more work than you think. It, 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 that, that 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 part where like it was like sideways raining. I got a I got a text from my fiance Megan. She was like, "Hey, heads up! It's like raining," <laughs> and I was like, "No, it's not. Nah, it ain't, <laughs> no, it's it not. It's that. fine. It's not raining. Everything's and, fine." And then it was raining. And then all of a sudden, I was like, "It is. Oh, <laughs> it is not fine." The rain was like, "This Hello. is not fine." So yeah, that was that was a stressful time and playing the show, the sh the actual like playthrough was awesome. Like we have some video of it and we you know, I like watching it and going like, "Oh, yeah, we did a good job, you know?" Yeah. Uh, by the end of it, I had had enough and I ran down to the ground and covered myself in mud to Jordan's <laughs> absolute nightmare like he Oh was, my god, we were um, just thinking the same thing. I was like, he, Dude, "We got to drive Jo uh, Jordan was and and to his credit, you know, he he wanted to take care of his truck. He wanted to keep it clean. I understand, and I was the absolute detriment to that. And uh, I have to cut you off there. He wanted to take care of his truck and keep it clean. Yes, that man went like three thousand miles over every oil change, <laughs> and eventually he calls me and he's like, "Corey, my engine light's on." Like, something's wrong. I get down to his house. It sounds like you grabbed a fistful of fucking Legos and threw it in his truck. And I'm like, dude, I'm like your cam phasers are gone. You have a Ford. It's a three valve. It's a five four Triton. I told you this would happen. I told you not to get this truck. Just just Jordan turns on the truck. It's this 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 awful oh ear piercing noise. God. And Corey goes, turn it off. <laughs> and it's like, He's is like, it is it bad? Yeah, <laughs> exactly what I thought was going to happen. Your cam phasers went, so now your timing chain guides are no more. So that noise you're hearing are your timing chains just slapping about. Like you could lose timing at any time and have a piston come up and smack the valves, and your engine's uh, done. That rule. Well, what do I do? <laughs> what do you do? Hey, this is new fancy part number. It fixes all vehicles. It's 17 digits. It's called a new VIN number. Get <laughs> rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Well, I just got it. I was like, and you didn't take care of it. Well, I, like, also, I told you you wouldn't. You know, he also, uh, we, <laughs> that truck that was, was that truck was unregistered for a while. And <laughs> I can't talk about that story. I can't talk. Good old times. I can't talk about it. It's, it's, there's, there's some insanity, but you know, I, I remember like uh warp tour was just, it was, uh, it was kind of a wake up call of like, you know, I don't think we're, as into this as uh, we thought we were, you know, I don't think we we were ready as like, you know, it, it didn't occur to me that being in a band actually requires more adult like <laughs> focus. Like <laughs> it's like, oh, you kind of have to have some kind of adult um, mindset with this. You can't just be like a dumb kid like the we whole time partying. That. that was not happening at that time. That was just it was, you know, like, you know, we were like figuring out our lives still and just like, you know, things were a mess and and it was like, oh God. And we just it was like this supposed to be like this great day. And then it just was like, this was not what we wanted. And then literally two days later, we played a birthday party. We played some we played uh 
Terra. What a Hall of Fame list of shows you guys have. I'm, well, we just, we just love playing shows. It was we just, just uh, it was, whatever we wanted. We, like, people offer us, like, the no most... rules. Uh, yeah, it was just, like, we just... It, no rules. We love to do it. Like, if, <laughs> if my personality had been in it, like, I've never been in a band, I've never done that thing, but if I had, I would have been the kid who, like, only wanted to play the Webster because I didn't want to, like put on like a bad image by playing other shows that were smaller. Like I would have wanted to like fake it till I make it and only play real shows. And in hindsight, it's like, no, that's the wrong way to do it. Like the right way is to go play every birthday party, like get every minute of stage time you can go play all the shows. Like getting, like getting better at playing shows is way more important than playing cool shows. And like that progress and that journey and meeting all the people and like, yeah, yeah. I would have done it so wrong. So to hear oh. you guys say it like so freely, it's like, hell yes, dude. Like I don't have yeah. that courage, but I'm glad you guys did. Dude, it's just fuck it. Yeah. Well, th- well, that's I mean, the, the the biggest thing was like I don't think we ever really cared what people really thought of us. Yeah, it, yeah. it didn't matter. It was like, oh, you're gonna go play a real cool show. Like, yep. what the fuck does that mean? Uh, you're right. Or we're cool guys. I like, know, dude. To uh, me, at I'll 18, it, I would have had an care. answer for you. And like as an adult, now it's like, no, yeah, that's the correct mindset. But yeah, me know. as a kid would have been like, what do you mean? Why does it matter to be cool? It's like, yeah, <laughs> we just didn't care. We had the same formula every show. I, yep. you know. Yeah, go harder and then find a way we to go a, harder. We got a set list, okay? I mean, practice the way you play. Yeah. Go hard when you practice. Go hard when you play. Like, yeah. that was kind of our thing. We just wanted to have, like, a hard, crazy, like, everything's everywhere. No one knows what's going on kind of stage show, stage presence or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was just our thing. Didn't matter if it was two people, 2,000 people. It didn't matter. It's mm-hmm. the same show every time. We weren't really, at least I think of it this way, we weren't really a band that you, like, buy the CD and listen to. You were a band, we were a band that you go, like, see. That's what I wanted. I yeah. wanted to be a, the band that you went and saw, not the band that you listened to. I didn't give a shit about that. Like, I gave got, a like, shit about who, like, showed up, yeah. And yeah. wanted to see the show, and just wanted to, like, hang out with us. Yep. That's the thing too is like, you know, I feel like a lot of times like when someone I saw somebody show genuine interest, I was like, you know, like let's get to know each other because it's like, you know, clearly you know you are connecting with what we're doing here, and so we made a lot of genuine friends, you know, and a lot of those people you know still care about, still know, and you know, support them and everything else and all that stuff today, you know, and. We, uh, yeah, it was just, it was like, that was, I think the big thing was like that birthday party I remember was so much more fun than Warped Tour. <laughs> and that's, and that, at that point, that's when I realized I think values is done. <laughs> so after that, I kind of mentally was like, I'm kind of done with this. Like, cause it just, we did it and, uh, you know, we, we, it was time to break up, you know, but we kept going after that, obviously, but it was just kind of like, guys, I think it's almost time. And, you know, and then like at that time, like, you know, we, you know, some of us were not doing too well mentally and, um, and it was just getting to a tipping point. And then eventually it was just, it was the end at some point. And I think it was for the best. And we just were like, we got to figure out a show. That's what I remember of the final show was it was in January and it snowed like fucking crazy. Yet, it, uh, well, of course, it did. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and I remember Jordan saying, "We could just reschedule." <laughs> and I was just like, "No, no. <laughs> I'm. D- I want to close the door. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. It's this time shit to is go. Over. Yep. It's time to go. I like because it was like we need to we need to break up and take care of our shit because I can't like I can't keep like trying to do shows every weekend and." You know, yeah. build the life that I want, and you know, and everybody else the same thing. It's like everybody's got to like deal with their shit first, and yeah. so, yeah. That <laughs> what do you remember about like the like the audience at the final show? Like, I imagine it would have been a soup, uh, really overwhelming outpouring of support of people celebrating the journey of values. Like, was it a, yeah? What did it feel like to have that many people kind of there in support of? almost like a living funeral in a sense. Like it's a very strange time to have a farewell show as a band. You get to have all these people come here and tell you how great it was and tell you all their favorite memories of the time. Like, yeah. What was that, that portion of the evening? Like, I'm pretty uh, sure we had a whole band just like drop off because of the snowstorm. Yep. I don't remember which band it was. It was like four years ago at this point. I, rem- I remember, yeah. but I won't name. Yeah. Um, we had a whole band drop off. Um, but yeah. some people had difficulties getting there. 
The people that did get there, like, you know. <laughs> Those poor people. <laughs> but they, well, that was the they, thing, they too. Did, they, uh, I don't know. I mean, they did make us feel like it was worth it. Yeah. And to some degree, but. I think, yeah. Like, that, the snowstorm, the fact that the snowstorm just, like, kind of blocked people from getting there. And I was like, man, this is, like, fitting. Yeah. Isn't this fitting? The, the biggest outpouring of support we ever got was, I want to say, our, uh, our. <laughs> Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was talking away from the thing. You're good. That's my job. Your job is to talk. You're doing yeah. a great job of that. Just leaning back. <laughs> Dude, get cozy. I think our biggest <laughs> outpouring of support was the uh, losses release at the Webster Underground. Okay. And that was on January 27th, 2017, I believe. Mm -hmm. That was our biggest outpouring of support because that was like us truly out on the line. We've never headlined at that point. And we were just like, man, we we're going to headline the Webster Underground, which, you know, to some people that doesn't mean anything. To us, that was like, holy shit. Like, you know, this, yeah. is, this is a big mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. This is a big thing. We've only opened on this stage. And I just remember going back and forth thinking like holy fuck man what if no one shows up what if no one shows up what if no one's here what if that was and then like the pace and Corey just like they were just like i don't think it was gonna show up <laughs> like, I, dude Corey, i really was i was like it's dude. fine we've got some really great bands with us like we got you know like we're gonna be okay he's like i don't know man <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> our like, own worst enemy <laughs> dude, we got all our friends with us and it's going to be great. And I was like, fuck our friends. I don't know if anyone's showing up to this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be empty. I don't know. <laughs> fucking place is going to be barren. Um, and then, you know, people started showing up one by one. And, like, I, I don't know if it's because I was, like, super nervous about people showing up. But I was, like, counting them as they walked in the door. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, that's another one. All right, there's another one. Another and the one. show turned out to be really, really good and really humbled me. I was like, man, like I that was the best. That was the best turnout, the best like show of support for the band ever was that release show. There was quite honestly nothing like it. Yeah, it was very weird. But I mean, it's, you know, I remember at that point, I remember something was posted on Facebook, Justin, Justin Leach posted something about it because he was mentioning like you know like the turnout and everything and and what he made what he made uh, 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 important as far as like stating what you know why that show happened the way it did and the outcome was that it was an entirely local show and it was like oh wow like we kind of brought like because like I remember like starting out hearing all the old heads talk about uh, you know, the, the shows back in the day where it was just like, you know, local bands and the places were packed, you know, they didn't need labels. They didn't need anything, any kind of business. They were just like, yep, it's a show and you got to find it. And, you know, it's like the realization of like, oh, we kind of did like old school and the new school, mm -hmm. you know, and we got people to, you know, fill out this venue for just yeah. local acts. I think the other huge part of that must have been like, to have Justin and the Webster supporting you is like an official stamp of approval, right? Like to this point, you've had your your friends and your peers and the VFWs have told you that you're doing well, but that's different than the the industry reaching its hand out and saying, "Hey, good job, guys! You've earned this. Here's here's a chance to do it." And I know the show went well, obviously. Yeah, like the yeah. Not only did you get a chance, but also it yeah, you paid off. Uh, it worked. Honest to God, seven years later, I still can't believe like the outcome of that show. Yeah, seven yeah. years later, I just like I'll I still think about it, and I was like, wow. That uh, was yeah. Well, that was, was the thing. Really was, something else. Anytime Justin was just like, you know, validating us, I was just like, why? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's like you know, we were we were, like we were just very um, blunt about ourselves. You yeah. know, we good old imposter yeah. syndrome. Yeah, man. just like we're just like you know, every time we played a show, we're just like, what did we do wrong? Yep. What do we? What can we fix? And then like you got Justin and every, you know other people just coming up and like. You know, giving us compliments and just like, I don't know what to do with that. So please calm down, <laughs> you know. But it was like, in retrospect, it was like, oh, like, you know, it was just nice to have. It's something that you take for granted at the time. And then yeah. you're kind of like, oh, damn. Did you guys, as a, as a band, did you ever celebrate your wins? Like, after, after this EP release show, was there a moment where you guys, like, 
went out to get beers together or sat at a campfire and like was there ever a, a celebratory moment of values or was it always this like uh this imposter mindset of like fuck what do we fuck up what do we fuck up what are we gonna fuck up what's gonna next fuck up gonna be or it's only there's this anxiety always like laced into the band and i'm wondering if there was ever a moment of kick our feet up of like oh we did do something cool here i think the thing of it was is i think we were we became friends first yeah and then we became bandmates second okay so like there were nights where like we were like hey we're not practicing but like some of us are meeting over at chicago sam's like let's go drink some beer yeah and that's what we would do so i'm sure we did celebrate in some form or some way did something but more or less like when we got back to normally it was just like jordan's house to offload the gear mm -hmm. stack it wherever we stored it we would just kind of like sit around for a couple minutes we'd raid the you know the beer fridge and just go all right what was that <laughs> was that good or was that bad anyone anyone have any problems with what just happened yeah it was kind of more of a round table discussion. That's a really good tradition. I've never heard of a band like unpacking after a show, but you should. Like that's a very wise thing to do. Uh, that was the thing. Was like we were the band. Like we, you know, we would just party at the show, yeah. and then afterwards, it was like, okay, time to reset, time to cool down, and whatever. And some of us are tired, and you know, maybe you know, one or two of us might have not had the best night, and it's time to like get out of here and whatever. Driving, who knows how long? Like you know, we. Yeah. It, we were never really uh, an after party kind of band, and yeah, there's some of these round table discussions that were at 11 p.m. There were some at 3 a.m. Yeah, I th I think the the they one happened. time uh, I remember where we actually it was a very early on, very early on show. It was that the cave show that I was uh, talking about, uh, where we actually realized like, oh, we've got something here. You know, because there was this, like, we were just pissed off. We were all, like, aggravated. We thought there was just nobody's going to watch, whatever. Uh, you know, we just were, we were not into a lot of the bands at the time. And we we're just like, what the hell's going on? And so, you know, we get up there and then we're just like, we're just playing new material. We're just playing as this four piece that, you know, you know to be. And the entire room just exploded when we played it. And after that, we were like, we got something here. We gotta get a trailer. Okay, we can get a trailer. Like we were just like plotting. We we're like, we can do this. Like it was the first time we were like, like yeah, like we can do this, you know. And those came up sporadically, but I think over time we just we drained ourselves so much. <laughs> like we just tired ourselves out, and we were just like, dude, I think we got that trailer. So that trailer was from <laughs> a, a band called Year Since the Storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were pretty big in like the early 2010s, late 2000s bunch of cool dudes we've been friends with those guys for a long time mm -hmm. and i think we got that trailer for like what 200 bucks on a 30 pack yep very cheap it was something like that it, it was, was, a good it was deal. some wild yeah. number like that very good deal like and it was like fucking canary yellow yep it still is <laughs> Still is. It's a great. It looks great. It's just I, like love, I love it. <laughs> like the tires on it are still like the original tires, and they're like bald as hell. And Jordan's been doing the maintenance. I remember huh? saying to Jordan, I was like, "Go to Tractor Supply, get a couple new tires. I'll mount them at work. No big deal." <laughs> See those eyes? Like <laughs> those are the eyes you missed when you first met her. Thought was a like, I missed that thousand yard stare. That was eight years ago. <laughs> eight years ago. Hey, Peter, what kind of tires do you think are still on that trailer? Bald Go ass ahead. bitch tires. Oh, wow. That's super weird that you guessed that. <laughs> That's so weird that you put that together. <laughs> <laughs> he like waxes the tires every day before we go for a drive. No, it's worse. <laughs> it's worse. It's just worse. It's, it's worse. I guarantee you. Oh, go God. to Jordan's house right now. That trailer is sitting on the side. What's his of address, house. just for the record? No. <laughs> I'll say it out loud. I know exactly where he lives. <laughs> Please go, no, Kings. Well, uh, as we as we start to wrap up here, we are yeah we're doing great on time. We yeah happy to add in any last stories here. Uh, the one thing that I have to ask about because I'd be a bad person if I didn't ask about the last time the guys were here, they alluded to the fact that like values was starting to chat again. I've heard some murmurs on the down low 
Uh, is there anything we can, is there anything happening? Is there anything we can say happening? Is there anything we would like to leave the people with as, as life unfolds here and as the, the story unfolds? Yeah, I, I don't know anything, but I would love to learn more. <laughs> and I'd be a bad person if I didn't at least ask and try and prod one little inch of some, some snippet of info out of you guys. I can say very candidly that what I said before, we were friends first, a band later. Still more or less the same thing. We're, yeah. we're friends first. We still see each other. We still hang out with each other. We still talk to each other. We still talk in our group chat. Which is shockingly rare. Like, I, as we're, you're saying this, it's like, oh, obviously the band still hangs out. But, like, most bands don't hang out. Like, generally speaking, after what you guys have been through, people are coworkers. And, yeah, you'll wave if you see each other at a show. But, like, to still be intimately tied, I think, is a very unique thing. Like, a testament to how strong this thing is. You more or less develop a way to separate business from personal yeah you know we yeah. kind of turned the band into more of a business type of thing sure whereas you know we weren't technically a business because we never made any fucking money but mm -hmm. <laughs> but personally we're still all friends yeah we still all give a shit about each other even jordan <laughs> <laughs> oh poor dude! Uh, poor poor guy, dude. Poor this is gonna be the I'm worst all, hour, of dude. Life. I'm all over him. I'm so sorry, not to him, but I'm so sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been a pleasure for me no, to go down. He's no, he's one of my best friends. That was yeah, a groomsman at his wedding. Course, yeah. I, he's one of my best friends. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's and, reliable. I can call him for anything. But like, like I was saying, <laughs> we're all still friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. we all still talk. We all still hang out. Just felt he's, wrong not to. You know, it was like we've been through too much. That's that's the thing is yeah. like if anybody's like curious, it's just like, you know, we broke up as a band, but we're just, you know, just, st still hanging out, still doing stuff, you know, and still geeking out about music and whatever else we can, you know, geek out about. So still creating in your own free time. Like, I know you've always been drawing. You always had other like oh, yeah. of art going. Is I, everything else still flowing? I can't stop that. <laughs> it's just it yeah. never stops. So, oh, yeah. It's 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 a constant thing. I love so. it. There's still a there's a sketch you made of me that it's still like in my saved stuff. It's like one day this is gonna be used of something, and it was in like your I character did? style. Yeah, it's of my like my old logo, or I guess the logo that's still oh, popping oh, around. The, it was, like, oh the yeah, face, and you like took it and made it like I guess alien style. I don't know exactly what the term would be. Um, I guess I did, but yeah, it exists. I can show it to you afterwards. <laughs> yeah. um, but I've always been a big fan of your work, so it's cool. Yeah, Thank cool you. to follow yeah. up on that. His style is incredibly unique. Yeah, I have something that he sketched, but it's on the back of my left calf. Hell yeah, he, he actually tattooed it on me. <laughs> Hell yeah, maybe maybe one day I'll uh, get back to learning tattooing and I can fix that. Remember that. <laughs> that next up. Corey, anything else you're still creating? Anything else you're still making in your free time outside of yeah? Anything else you're still creating these days? I think I'm creating. <laughs> any, oh. any art you're making? Or doing any, are you writing any music on your own? Are you playing music still? Are you doing anything on your free time? Or is bass feel like something of the past? I, I don't know, man. I mean, I just... <laughs> Dude, I don't create shit. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> little yin and yang here. We um, love it. Like, I wake up every morning and I'm like, oh, wow. That's new. <laughs> every day is a new journey. It is. But I don't really create shit. I just kind of like try to make time for my family and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I lost my stepfather back in July I'm Sorry, and I appreciate it, but you know, I, I just try to like be around more for my family. My, of course, yeah. my younger brother's got two daughters now. One's one year old and one's two. Yep. I don't know why he did that to himself, but he did. <laughs> uncle Corey. <laughs> so I, I try to just like You'd make more time, uncle. make more time. No, I'm just mangy uncle Corey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel that yeah we had a I had a family health situation recently as well and it's kind of made me the similar thing of like oh this isn't gonna last forever this is worth investing more time in now because yeah changes your your perspective on yeah yeah thankfully it wasn't things. anything too serious and yeah. it was all resolved quickly but yeah it's one of those moments of like oh yeah I am I am getting older and fortunately that means everyone else around me is also getting older and that starts to incur problems yep. as time goes on Just, uh, well, all of us in uh that were in values, we're all in our 30s now. Yeah. I just turned 31. Yeah. Baker's 31. I want to be 35 this year. Hell yeah. Good Christ. So, that's, that's the thing. Is, uh, Jordan. Jordan's like, what, 32? He's going to be 33 this year, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the passage of time. Holy shit. Never stops. It, it has stop not. Just time. Does not stop for any man. Doesn't care. Doesn't matter. And then one day the sun's going to explode and 
all our stories will be gone. <laughs> this is true. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad that we have this little piece of our story frozen at least time until the sun does explode. Like, yeah. That was beautiful. What poem is that from? I think... Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like Brad Pitt said it. So I'm not going to lie. Are you sure? Poet. Brad Pitt said Are you sure that wasn't a Ralph Waldo Emerson piece? Are you making fun of my Maybe. bathroom signs? Are you sure? I don't know where it came from, but I remember. You know what? That was probably an E.E. E. Cummings piece. It could have been. I don't know where it came from. I saw him say it, and I said, that's very true. I'm just going to yeah. relax now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, sun I you guys a thank you for uh, the video we did. I'm um, forgetting the name of it. I wrote it down here. It was, I don't know. We did a music video together. I'm drawing Oh, oh, it was uh, Pulse. Uh, um, Pulse. 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 Thank you. Pulse together. We did yes. Pulse together. The reason I bring it up is because that was like, one of my first full band things. So it's nice to have a full circle moment of y'all coming to my place now. And yeah, f completing the, the values. What's the, tri the after trilogy is quadrilogy. I don't know. Quadrilogy? Quadrilogy. <laughs> That sounds like it may be probably not the right term, but I'm going to no, run that's, with it that, right No, that now. works, because I remember, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's quadrilogy. Well, the quartet, maybe, is the, the quartet. simple one here. The values quartet. We are quartet. technically a quartet. The quartet. <laughs> um, hell yeah, Kings. We are wrapping up here. Anything else we want to get out before we let the people go? Where can people find you on social media? Uh, are we active on social media? Do you Don't want come find to? us. We're <laughs> no, you Brad. can find me on Instagram. If you want to look for me, find me. Thank Sick. you. <laughs> Sick. Value Stuff's all streaming. I was on the band camp today, so I know all the, the digital record is there for us to go live through and to stream, check out the old songs, We Live Glory Days. Corey, anything else you want to let people know about? <laughs> <laughs> what is, no. I need I need one more fun fact about Jordan before I let you get out of here. A fun fact about him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me with a some. fun fact about Jordan. Oh, jeez. God damn. All right, let me think of a fun <laughs> fact about Jordan. All right, well, Jordan is a lifelong Dallas Cowboys fan. Yep. <laughs> Shouldn't that be enough ammo in all itself? <laughs> He's also a New York Yankees fan. I remember it. This I, man has lived in Enfield, Connecticut his entire life. He's never once lived in Dallas. <laughs> nor New York. <laughs> that was a pretty fun fact, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 58, something from everyone. <laughs> Values is complete. The quartet is complete. Appreciate you guys coming through. Thanks for making the trip down. Awesome. Talk soon. Thanks for listening, friends. Thank you, Peter. Um, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Much love, guys. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all being such a, a beacon of happiness. Have a great evening. Have a great life.